Now let us try to understand. Having said that there are eight different uh, parameters to be considered during the validation. Do I mean that all parameters needs to be considered during the validation? Uh, the answer could be yes or no. And it again depend on to the type of the testing procedure. It again depend on to the type of the testing procedure. So which parameter do I need to consider is going to be the part of the presentation. And you can understand that, you know, I have one parameter onto the screen that is the, or the type of analytical procedure on the screen, and that is the identification. So in case if you are using the identification for paracetamol tablet, identification of a paracetamol present into a paracetamol tablet, the question could be for you, how do I make the protocol now? So for making a protocol, you should first list down the, the number of parameters to be performed. And we talked that there are eight different parameters. How many parameters there are? There are eight different parameters. So how you confirm that for identification, do I need to take all these eight parameters or do I need to take one or three or seven parameters? So as there are many experienced people in the audience today, I would like to hear from all of you that which parameter you consider during the validation of an identification testing procedure. Please mention the name of the parameter. Ravindra says specificity. Aisha says uh, only specificity. Malesh says accuracy, specificity. Farooq says accuracy. Ranjit says specificity. Budepu says LOD, accuracy, Raju says accuracy, Saili says specificity. Wow, great. So I think the people are talking about at least three to, three to four different parameters. Someone talks about the precision also now. Ravindra says peak purity. Let us now understand as a part of identification by FTIR. I'm giving a very common example because this is the technique which is widely used for identification of the drug substance. So what do you assess as a part of this FTIR analysis? Please type into the chat box. Do you calculate the intensity of the peaks? Do you quantify something out of your experiment? That is the question. Absolutely not. You are not quantifying. Identification is always to be a quantitative test or qualitative test. I'm asking you, is this a qualitative test or quantitative test? Right. So we all know that this identification by FTIR is a qualitative test and there is no as such quantitation going to happen. And if there is no quantitation going to happen, let us now understand the, the, the possibility of conducting the precision during this identification test. We will rule this one by one and try to understand. So what is the precision is means, what is the meaning of the precision parameter? We'll talk about some definition part also in between. The precision is nothing but to evaluate the, the degree of closeness, the degree of closeness between the results observed, right? or the, the difference between the measurements or how these measurements are uh, spread across. Hmm? That is the precision study. But one important point is we have to have some quantification done. What we have to have some like assay is 99% in one sample, 98% in another sample, 101% in third sample. So you have the quantification and then you can realize that how these results are spread from one another. But as a part of this uh, qualitative test, what you report, we only report the result is complies or either result is not complies, yes or no? Now, where is the quantification present into this particular test? So there is no as such quantification happening. And hence, if there is no such quantification possible as the end measuring result, how do I confirm the spreading of this different measurements result? All looks like complies, complies, complies. And hence, the precision, do you think it is really possible? How many of you think that now the precision looks to be a not a possibility? Type me in the chat box. Or type yes or no in the chat box. I'm just trying to explain you. 
in which context the precision may not be a possibility. Let us now understand the accuracy part. Now, this is the, the very critical parameter as far as validation is concerned. And we're very serious about the, and choosing the parameter in a right way. So what is done during the accuracy part? The accuracy can be evaluated based on to the bias or based on to the recovery. Or we call that a percent recovery. So let me assume that we are going to choose uh, accuracy evaluation based on to the percent recovery. Again, they need a quantification like amount added can be known to you. You may spike certain amount of your uh, paracetamol if they're placebo during uh, measuring the FTIR, and you may scan a beautiful IR out of that sample. But the amount added is known to you. The true amount is known to you. But what is required to calculate the percent recovery? You require two important uh, uh, informations. The first one is what? It is the ratio of uh, your amount found and amount added. And into 100, you will do it for the converting the result into a percent. So in the very first hand, you say, oh my God, I know the amount added because I measured the weight of the paracetamol. It is 10 mg. And then I spiked into a placebo. I ran the FTR and I have the FTR. The second important point is, as a part of this evaluation, do we quantify the paracetamol present based on to the FTIR? Type yes or no in the chat box. Do we quantify, oh no, look at it, this is a 9.9 .9 mg FTIR paracetamol I could see in the FTIR? Absolutely no. Again, if there is no possibility of quantification, the percent recovery is next to impossible to evaluate. And for that reason, if there is no possibility to evaluate the amount found, we cannot establish the percent recovery or we cannot also perform the accuracy study. How many of you understand this point? Type me in a chat box. I talked about why the precision is not a possibility for the identification test parameters. And in the second way, I'm also trying to explain you how the accuracy is not, not going to be a reality. So we already lost two important parameters. We already lost two important parameters. But do you think that the linearity or is going to be a possibility for identification by FTIR? How many of you think it is required, possible? Type yes or no in the chat box. Linearity, and this is the detector response. Hmm? Paracetamol's response, right? See. We can certainly measure the response of the paracetamol on FTIR also. Yes or no? We can measure the response of the or absorbance value of the paracetamol on FTIR also. How many of you agree with this? Type me in the chat box. We can do that. But in the current, in the given testing procedure, do I intend to measure the response of paracetamol? It is a possibility the technique has that versatility, right? This is the, the benefit of the FTIR. And I often see that um, some antacids uh, assay, especially for uh, cymethicone, hmm, is measured by using the FTIR. So we measure the, as the absorbance value of cymethicone or dimethicone. I do not know exactly the name of the compound at particular wavelength, and then you can say, now I can quantify that. But in the identification testing procedure, am I supposed to measure the transmittance value or absorbance value for any reason? Type yes or no into the chat box. So in case if I'm not going to measure, my method doesn't allow me to do a measurement, I am not supposed to measure any response for the detector also. And hence, in the given context of the testing procedure, I cannot understand the response of the standard. I can just scan the spectra, right? And how they look, will they look differently? If I make 100 ppm paracetamol, so if I may, not 100 ppm, but let us say I take 1 mg add into a placebo, 2 mg add into a placebo, 10 mg add into a placebo, and then measure the FTIR, then scan the FTIRs. Do you think I will get the different spectra? 
Do you think that this characteristically they will be different from one another? Absolutely no, they will not be. So if you normalize those spectra, if you normalize those spectra, they can simply overlay, they can simply just look like the same. So as such, there is no different response is possible as a part of identification assessment and hence, is there a need, a possibility to evaluate linearity of the detector response for the given identification testing procedure? Type yes or no in the chat box. What do you think? Will you be able to define the linearity? Type yes or no in the chat box. I'm talking about the identification like FTIR, it can be UV, it can be HPLC based on the retention time. So now we realize that, you know, for identification test, we cannot do precision, we may not do accuracy and also the, uh, the linearity. Can we able to evaluate the LOD and LOQ also where there is a quantification again? Is it possible to quantify LOD and LOQ for the identification test? Wherever there is a quantification, then LOD, LOQ is also not the possibility. Because that talks about the concentration part, detection, concentration, and the quantitation concentration. So again, the LOD, LOQ has also out of the picture. So what parameter has left behind now? Hmm? Which parameter has left behind? The specificity or selectivity. Now, what is the specificity or selectivity talks about? It talks about evaluating the interference to the analyte, maybe from diluent, maybe from sample matrix or sample preparation procedure. Can I able to understand that my sample preparation, my sample matrix is going to interfere in identification of the paracetamol? Is it possible for me? Type yes or no in the chat box now. I'm asking you, will I be able to evaluate the, the specificity? Will I be able to understand the interference from the placebo to the paracetamol or any another sample matrix components present into this paracetamol sample? Absolutely, yes, I can able to understand that. And with this logic, can I conclude that, oh my God, at least specificity or uh, selectivity is possible for the identification? At least I got one parameter which can be considered for the validation for the identification testing. Yes or no? So as for if you look at this, uh, all three guidelines, you look at ICH, FDA and NVISA, they all said that in case if you are validating the identification test method, minimum, you have to consider specificity. You have to prove that I am able to identify the paracetamol without any interference from the sample matrix, without interference from the dilute or the test preparation that I am following. This is one important parameter. But uh, I have a question for you. If I just execute the specificity part, I just run the placebo, right? And I said, okay, look at here, there is no such interference coming. And I run the probably one sample or the standard. So what is the intention behind conducting the precision? I understand that the quantification of uh, compound is required to evaluate the percent RST, to evaluate the standard deviation, how they are scattered. And we often measure the six measurements to conduct the precision study. So what I do in addition to the specificity, now, this is the bare minimum requirement. That doesn't mean I cannot perform the another parameters. So what is the best parameter I can select? I wanted to understand if uh, the quality control people are validating the testing procedure for a very first time. They also need to go through some experience of conducting this testing for the identification test. So my requirement is not to calculate any kind of percent RST. I don't want to quantify the FTIR. Maybe the correlation coefficient is also out of the picture. But I just want the analyst to record the FTIR spectra for six times. I just want to analyst or chemist to record the FTIR for six times. 
and just understand whether the results are complying or not complying for the six times. Now, is that a possibility type yes or no into chart box? That I'm not going to quantify any the result as such out of the precision. But my intention is what? Because of this, the quality control analyst, the chemist, will get the first hand experience on understanding how this method performs. In the similar way, I can also say that it, let me understand what is the instrument to instrument variation I perform onto the Perkin instrument. And then I will do on the Shimerji or another FTIR in the lab by another analyst on different day to understand that there is no difference between the result. If they are generated on different machines on different day by different analysts, and I would call that as an intermediate precision or ruggedness, what you want to call that, you can call it. So is that a wise idea? Is that a good idea to also include a precision as the second parameter for the identification assessment? That is what I'm trying to put over here. Type yes or no into chat box. Is it possible? Yeah. Is it possible to include? And this is the acceptance criteria. You cannot put the percent or something like that. You can put that all six results need to comply. Isn't it? All results should need comply. The spectra should be concordance with each other, the standard and sample. And that's it. You completed now your specificity first and then the precision and intermediate precision. So can we conclude that the, for identification, even though the guidelines talks about only specificity, we can also go for the precision study, type yes or no in the chat box, or give me a thumbs up into chat box before I move on to the second parameter or second type of testing procedure. 